Hi guys, welcome to the video. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you my technique on how to take the perfect free kick. I'm gonna break it down into five easy steps. I hope you enjoy the video. Right, so the first step we're gonna do is ball placement. Now, for me, there's a huge difference between, see this divot here? There's a huge difference between that and placing it on top of the grass. You know, the difference is if it's in a divot and you're trying to connect underneath, it might be more difficult. On the other end, if it's too high and it's on top of the grass, then you're more likely to hit it over. So what I like to do is try and find a neutral. And by doing that, I just rub it on the ground, find the neutral spot, and then that's the first step, ball placement. So once I've got the ball set, the first step, the second step is my run up. The first thing I'll do is I'll put my foot, my plant foot right next to the ball. That way I'm on track to put my plant foot here and strike through it. I'll then take one, two, three steps back and then I'll put one foot behind the other. Now for me, one foot behind the other just gives me a bit more balance. You know, if I'm on two feet and then I go to move, I'm slightly more off balance. Whereas if I'm on one foot, I'm more balanced and I can lean straight into the run-up. Another thing about the run-up is, if I'm too square onto the ball, some, some players like Beckham, for example, he uses this technique, which I find a lot more difficult. Because if it's more square on the ball, it's then harder for me, if I want to put it in the far corner, A, get my plant foot right, but B, make sure that I'm going over and around it. Mo most of the time when I use that style of run-up, the ball goes over. As the same other way, if I'm too straight, then I find it more difficult to open up my hip and get it over and under. So for me, a neutral position, 45 degrees, is perfect. And that's the second step, the run-up. When I practice free kicks as well, you'll notice that I've put a marker here where the ball should go. Because what will happen in games is the ref will step out 10 yards, but most of the time in the wall, the players move a little forward. So this is actually nine and a half yards to the wall. So I always give myself an extra half yard of practice. And hey, if they're 10 yards away, they're 10 yards away. So once I've got ball placement, I've got my run up sorted. The third step is aim. So, most people think, oh, I'm aiming for that top left-hand corner. And that is correct. I am aiming for the top left corner. But to make it easier on myself, I'm going to give myself a target in the wall to try and hit. Because it's a bit closer to me, so it's more an achievable goal. So the aim that I like to, to look at is, usually at this distance, a team will, will usually put a five-man wall with, with a charger. But five-man wall, this middle guy is usually what I'm aiming at, just above him. And I also give myself that extra room for if the wall's gonna jump, because you never know. So I'm gonna give myself about six inches above the head of this uh, third guy in the wall. And what will that allow with the trajectory of the ball is for it to curl over. Because if I start to aim here, which is a direct straight line to the top corner, my ball's gonna curl and it's gonna go wide. So I give myself that extra meter to then aim six inches above the head of this third guy in the wall. And that's the third step, aim. So one thing I, I always look at as well is the keeper's positioning. If the keeper is stood closer to the left post, I may be more inclined to go far post. If the keeper is stood right on the other side, on the other, on the other post, then it gives me a little more time to get it over the wall so I don't have to put as much power on it. Most keepers will do a neutral position though, but I always look to see the keeper's positioning. fourth step is my connection on the ball. 
So once I've got my run up set, I know exactly where I'm aiming. As I come in and as I plant that foot, it's very important now the position of this foot. If I'm too far this way, it's gonna go that way. If I'm too far that way, the ball's gonna go that way. So I want to try and keep a, a neutral swing through and I wanna connect the ball middle to bottom. If I connect it too low, it's gonna go over. If I connect it too high, I'm gonna hit the wall. So a perfect is right where the FIFA sign is. I'm gonna be hitting here with the instep of my foot. And then as the ball will go, it should give spin like that. So right where that FIFA mark is, that's exactly where I'm aiming. That's the fourth step. So the fifth and final step is my follow through. So as I run up to the ball, I hit my plant foot here, my connection on the ball, exactly what I explained on the FIFA sign, in step, but then it's extremely important that I follow through with my movement. If I come up to the ball, if I come up to the ball and I just jab at it, I'm not gonna get enough power, trajectory and spin for the ball to go up and over the wall. So when I come up to the free kick, all I'm thinking about is following through with my movement and making sure I get enough power to get it over and down on the wall. That's the fifth step. So once you got your five steps, then it's just footy, put it in the bins. You could probably hashtag that. I hope you've all enjoyed my video on how to take the perfect free kick with my five simple steps. See you on the next video. Jack Blake, Noah Powder standing over this one. Lewis on his line. Blake's gonna step up to take it. Blake, shot, goal! Jack Blake! Or Jack of Blades, as the Wasatch Legion calls him. And what a free kick by Jack Blake there. And Landon, I had to be quiet because I was eating my words, but...